Hello and welcome back to the Stevenson Weekender sailboat build. My name is Brent and in this episode we'll be building the keel for the boat. The plans call for laminating pieces cut from three 14 foot 1x12s. I'll start by popping the straight reference line that the other measurements will be taken from. I will then make a mark every 12 inches along this reference line to act as station lines. I'll then number each of the station lines according to the plans. plans then give me a measurement above and below the blue reference line at each of the station lines and I'll make a mark at each. Small finish nails are then temporarily placed at each measurement mark and a thin piece of wood is held against these nails in order to draw a fair line in the shape of the keel. As mentioned before, the plans call for sandwiching three boards together with glue or epoxy. I was worried about being able to line everything up during the glue up process, so I'm putting in some dowels as reference pins. Here I have the two boards sandwiched together that will be the outside laminations. With these dowel reference pins, I'll be able to get the boards back into the exact same spot after cutting them to shape. I'm cutting them proud here so that when I get the third piece of the lamination in place, everything will be flush. I still have the two outer laminations sandwiched together and I'll cut along the curve, keeping the blade just a hair away from the line. I'll then use a belt sander to bring the cut exactly to the line so everything will be nice and fair. We'll flip it around and do the same thing for the top curve of the keel. So here it is with the curves cut and everything sanded to the lines.
Now I'll begin to work on the stem and the stem tip. This calls for much of the same, measuring out the pieces according to the dimensions listed in the plans. I then removed my reference dowels and separated the two outer laminations. Here I'm laying out the stem keel joint and then I'll line up the stem tip. Next I will use the finish nails as before to begin to lay out the curve of the stem. As you can see I spent quite a bit of time making small adjustments by siding down the curve in order to get a graceful transition from the keel to the stem tip. Once I was satisfied with everything, I made my mark along the batten board. Just like before, we'll cut everything out and then use the belt sander to sand to the line. I then traced out and cut identical pieces of the stem and the stem tip for the opposite side of the lamination. Now I will lay out the parts for the middle section of the lamination. didn't bother trying to get as close to the lines on these middle sections. As you will see in a few moments, after I had all the pieces sandwiched back together, I used a trim router with a flush trim bit to bring the middle piece of the lamination into the same shape as the outer piece. The reference dowels were holding everything in alignment.
here I am putting the middle section beneath the outer piece of the lamination. Then I'll rough cut the middle piece and then use that trim router to bring everything flush. So now I will use those reference dowels once again to get everything back in line for a dry fit of all three layers. So here it is dry fit together. You can get a brief glimpse of the stern block there that I didn't show previously. Uh, I think it all turned out looking pretty good. I cut a piece out of this old scrap of 6x6 six six to use as the dead wood between the top of the keel and the uh, back of the uh, stem. And here I am once again using that thin piece of wood as a batten to match the curve on the top of the keel to this piece of dead wood. Once I had the line where I wanted it, I cut this piece out on the bandsaw off camera. Okay, now I've got everything down at the other shop and we'll start by taking everything apart. As you can see, I have the gluing platform covered in plastic to keep the epoxy from sticking to it. I built and leveled this platform in the last video if you didn't see that one. I will be using the epoxy from Total Boat. It's their 5 to 1 system. This is my first time building anything with epoxy, but their pump system and the information from the Total Boat website made everything fairly easy. First I will apply a flood coat or a sealing coat to the two opposing sides of each piece. This is to seal the pores in the wood, which will provide a stronger bond when I apply the thickened epoxy to join the two layers together later. And as you can see in the background, I finally figured out that if I turn the camera sideways, I can avoid those vertical bars in the video. After everything was coated, I allowed the epoxy to set for a few hours and get firm but not completely cured. I will then apply epoxy thickened with silica and spread that with a notched trowel. We will then get our two pieces sandwiched back together and I will use those dowel pins again to get everything back into an easy alignment. I will apply clamps to pull the boards together and to pull them against the leveled platform. I only tighten the clamps just enough to get them together. I did not tighten them so hard so as to squeeze out all the epoxy. I didn't have enough clamps so I also used a 18 gauge brad nailer with some stainless steel brads. Here is a shot of how it looked after I got the first two pieces of the lamination put together. Now I will do the same thing with the other outside piece of the lamination. I will use unthickened epoxy as a cedar coat, allow that to set up for a few hours and then come back with the thickened epoxy. I had bought some more clamps as well.
I will get all the squeeze out cleaned up as much as I can and then let it set for a few days. As you can see, the cat decided to join me uh, for the taking off of the clamps. It's a good thing she waited until the epoxy was dry, I suppose. When I flipped it over, there was quite a bit of squeeze out from the joints that had been facing down during the glue up. I tried a few different things but found that this paint scraper uh, seemed to work the best to remove the excess epoxy. And the cat had settled in by this point. Next I removed the sawhorses and lowered the platform. You can't see them in this shot, but I attached caster wheels to the bottom of the platform so I could roll everything around. I have the keel supported in the vertical position with these braces. I hope you will join me next time when we'll start work on the bottom hull of the boat. I really do appreciate you watching these videos. Please like and subscribe and join me next time as we continue to build Stevenson Weekender.